first to the end of an era. Bob Ray. Thanks, Rosalind. Election season is upon us, and for the first time in a long time, there is one name that won't be on the ballot. That's the name of Henry Wade. He's had enough of the courtrooms and the criminal trials, but he's left a mark that, for better or worse, will be remembered. In 1950, Harry Truman was president of the United States. Dallas had a population of 434,000 and a skyline that looked like this. And it was in 1950 that Henry Wade was first elected district attorney of Dallas County. Today, 36 years later, there are almost a million people in Dallas. The city skyline bears little resemblance to the 1950 model. America has had seven, yes, seven other presidents since Truman. And Henry Wade is still the district attorney for Dallas County. Uh, hope I have a reputation for a strong prosecution. Uh, I'm trying to build one. He has been a no politics, no nonsense, professional prosecutor of the first degree. He has the uh, uh, national reputation of running the uh, most efficient and effective uh, prosecutor's office in the country. I would probably equate him to George Wallace. Oh, I think it's a man that planned this murder weeks or months ago. And he has served longer than any other district attorney in the history of the country. A native of Rockwall, he graduated from high school at the top of his class, and he went on to become president of his University of Texas Law School class, a class that included John Connolly. When the November 22, 1963 tragedy occurred, in addition to a president being killed, Wade had a personal friend who was wounded. Do you expect to call uh, Mrs. Kennedy or uh, Governor Connolly if he's able in this uh, trial as uh, witnesses? We will not unless it's absolutely necessary. And at this Connolly to this day thinks that Oswald was shooting at him. You know, he had given him a bad discharge from the Marine Corps while he was Secretary of Navy. Of course, Wade would never try Oswald. Instead, he would prosecute Oswald's murderer. The Jack Ruby case would be Wade's most celebrated. With the international press watching and nationally renowned defense attorney Melvin Balli in the case, there were those who bet on Ruby getting anything but a death penalty. The 300 members of the press here covering that or more, they all put a dollar in and guessed the verdict. Uh, who got nearest to it, we're going to get the whole pot, you know. Oh, really? And uh, did you know more uh, than half of them voted not guilty? Based strictly on Belli's uh, participation? That Belli, and you had the suspended sentence, the big bunch, and there's only five that voted death penalty. And you got the death penalty? We got the death penalty. Wade prides himself on running a department that produces prosecutors who can go up against the best defense attorneys around. More than 900 of the lawyers practicing in Dallas have been former Henry Wade assistants, and his office keeps chalking up records. The last time we had a statistical survey done was in 1981, and at that time, our conviction rate was 93% in felony cases here in the city of Dallas. And just to give you some comparisons, in that year, Houston had an 86% conviction rate, Chicago, 83, San Antonio, 77, Philadelphia 75 and Atlanta 70 percent. In fact, just recently, district attorneys from Detroit, San Diego, and several other cities have come to Wade asking how he does it. Wade, uh, uh, in uh, I think personality and, and in appearance, typifies uh, what we think of when we think of uh, a district attorney. What do you mean by that? Because uh, oh, he looks the part. Okay. He looks the part. And uh, he sounds the part. He's, it's almost as if he were a, a Hollywood uh, typecast. About the only place he doesn't look the part, and then maybe he does even here, is when he's farming the 160 acres he owns and the other 800 acres he leases in Rockwall and Kaufman counties. He often spends weekends and one evening a week working the land that he came to know as a child. Well, you know, I was raised on a farm. It was a farm boy, a smart one, but still a farm boy who became a legend as Dallas' number one lawyer. But to some degree, it was that image that may have caused him to be ridiculed by some national press and suspected as being insensitive by minority groups. 
if you will look at the real burden in this country that African Americans have had, it has been the justice system. So I, I think that uh, the district attorney's office is not without its, uh, if I could use a very coined expression, without its black mark. He was one of the first people to hire minority members into this office, even before some of the law firms here in Dallas did so. The first black district judge in Dallas County was formerly a prosecutor. The first woman district judge in, in Dallas County was a prosecutor with this office. The first black elected district judge was Larry Baraka, who remembers coming down from St. Louis for his first interview with the legend. My first interview with him, he was chomping on a, on a cigar and was spitting it out. And from my angle, I couldn't see where he was spitting. Best I could see, he was spitting on the floor. And it kind of surprised me. You know, I'm thinking, what? And I'd heard about Henry Wade, you know, famous Henry Wade. And so on the one hand, I'm thinking, whoa, oh, here's one of these guys I've been reading about, you know, the redneck, you know, cigar chomping, spitting out uh, uh, law enforcement officer. And in talking with him, though, uh, I really was impressed with his sincerity. No, I guess I got kind of mixed feeling about him. I think he's a man who has seen the time change and has, with some gradualism, um, moved into the time. But I think that's what's wrong with Dallas now. I think that that office is like the rest of them. We're, we're about to OD on gradualism. I think that Mr. Wade has gone through a metamorphosis, quite honestly. Uh, but I think to a degree, and I don't mean this as an apology for Mr. Wade, but let's face the reality, history is what it is. Uh, people had certain ideas and views. And the real mark of a person, I think, is the ability to adapt and change, particularly if they see that a view is incorrect and begin to change it. Wade says he won his first election with 90% of the minority vote because for the first time there was a promise that a Dallas district attorney would prosecute minorities who commit crimes against minorities. He spoke with black leaders, convinced them that he was serious, and then convinced witnesses in such cases to testify. We now get real good cooperation from black witnesses because one year we gave 90 life sentences in, in cases of crimes where blacks on black. The question of the DA's insensitivity was raised again in the case of Linnell Jeter, a young black convicted of robbing a Balch Springs convenience store. Press reports, especially CBS 60 Minutes, questioned whether Jeter was guilty. And in 1984, Wade dropped the charges against Jeter after charging another person with the crime. Some people thought Wade owed Jeter an apology. My theory in dismissing the case had nothing to do with his guilt or innocence. Uh, it had to do with the press that hurt the criminal justice system. And I thought you'd be better off giving him a new trial. And, and then you say, why don't you apologize to him? I think we did him a favor to get him out, you, and, and you're assuming he's innocent. Yes. Yeah, you're assuming, see, most of the press assume that. Right. Because 60 Minutes said so, and because of the news, but. And as you say, you, you, you still don't assume that. Right. No, I don't I mean, assume that. You asked about the, the bad features of this office, uh, or the good features of it. One of the worst is the press. What's wrong, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with us? Well, you were born in the 60s, the Vietnam War, and you had all the revolts going on, and uh, you had, and you, I'm not saying you, but I'm talking I'm about sure. a lot of people, became journalists and lawyers, because they figured they could do more good. There's not a day that I don't read the paper, the, Dallas Morning News and the Dallas Times Herald where there's not a complete falsehood in there. He's a man who speaks his mind. He has been critical of many Dallas judges, and while he worked for J. Edgar Hoover for four years, he didn't particularly like him. He says he's played it straight, offering no special favors to anyone, whether a Dallas County commissioner, a Dallas socialite, singer Willie Nelson who was convicted on a weapons charge, or his own brother. Many years ago, uh, Mr. Wade's brother, Nay, uh, was arrested for a series of DWIs. Mr. Wade called his staff together and told them at that time that he'd fired the first person that gave Nay Wade any undue consideration. Uh, in fact, when uh, Nay was in jail, he called, uh, at that time, his brother, Mr. Wade, 
and they asked him to come get him out of jail. He said he wouldn't. He told him it was cold in the jail, and uh, Mr. Wade told Nay to ask the jailer for another blanket. Wade goes back to the land for refuge from the big city hassles and the rigors of the DA's office. The Rockwall farmer, who's lost only two political battles in his life, his first try for the DA's job in 1946 and 10 years later when he ran for Congress. While Wade got almost twice as many votes as Democratic presidential candidate Adlai Stevenson in Dallas County, Eisenhower's Republican coattails were still too long. His number one interest is his family, two sons, three daughters, and a wife who has waged a fearless battle with cancer. I'm number one interested uh, in going down his history as uh, a good a per man was raised a good family and was good to him. Second, I hope that I'm recognized as having established professionalism in the district attorney's office in Texas and this, this office. In all your 36 years, is there any regret? Well, I've been one. I don't say I've never done anything. It, later, I didn't thought probably I was wrong on the thing. I'm sure that's, that that's happened, but I'm not one that looks back. I always look and see what's going to happen tomorrow. There are a number of men who would be district attorney in the Democratic field. Uh, there are four candidates, Peter Lesser, Jim Johnson, John Allison, and Royce West. And on the Republican side, John Sparling is running against John Vance. We'll continue covering those races.